I'm really into matcha now. Hey everybody, so this video is all about Gray and I's decision to censor our kiddos on social media. The subject was voted on by patrons, and if you would like some future input regarding what I explore on this channel, be sure to check out the link in the description and become part of the club. Otherwise, let's dive right in! So right off the bat, I want to make it really clear that this vid is merely a descriptive explanation of Grayson and I's choice, and it is in no way prescriptive of what I think everybody should do, nor is it judgmental of families who approach the internet differently. I think a ton of you know by now that I highly value autonomy and one of my biggest pet peeves is when folks project what works for them onto others. Because you don't always know what others have going on, nor do you know why they're doing what they're doing. Just off the top of my head, I can think of several like, influencer fams who feature their kiddos in ways that I personally find responsible, safe, purposeful, and proportional. They're good. I think they're good. And then of course there are many accounts that feel more exploited and unkind and just kind of icky, which is very sad. But basically I'm trying to emphasize that it's a really wide gamut and this is a complex issue. But if you do happen to be a person who is online and you have children, you eventually have to make a choice. And so today I offer up myself as a case study for you. I'll talk about what we do, our thought processes and motivations behind that, as well as some challenges we face as a mildly online family. So first things first, how do I censor my kids? Well, Gray and I have never posted any videos or audio recordings of the kids, and I don't think we ever plan to. At least not in this moment or the near future. As far as photos and still images go, we do post those, but we always put a emoji or sticker over their faces. And finally, specific or personal information about them, such as their assigned sexes, names, etc., we don't put that online. Now don't get me wrong, we like to tell funny stories and share vague info, but we try to be really mindful about the info not being super identifying, and we also attempt to only talk about our family through the lens of like parenting or our experience. That way the twins aren't the ultimate focus or star of the video. They aren't like the main source of entertainment and education. It's more about Gray and I learning and navigating this new chapter in our lives, if that makes sense. And I do this because I personally want to stay really far from relying on my children for material or like content farming from them. And if I talk about them, I want it to feel organic and meaningful to me. Which brings me to the last measure I take, which is being thoughtful about how much content I post about the kiddos. So for example, since giving birth, I have published 81 Instagram photos. I checked. 12 of those feature my children with their faces covered. And on top of that, there are 13 other posts that are related to parenting or pregnancy or something like family adjacent. So all in all, that's 25 out of 81 pictures. And again, I just think that helps the focus stay on the adults and not the kids who don't work for us. So that's how we censor them. Pretty simple. Next, let's discuss why we've chosen to do this. Well, personally, we think it's a great way to show respect for their safety and privacy. The internet is a wild and dangerous place. There are a lot of people who don't like queer families, and more specifically, who don't like me. If my kids are heavily associated with me and easily identifiable, they could become targets. Targets for anything from violent stalking to shitty homophobic bullying at school. Either way, it sounds like a pretty traumatic bummer and something I would like to avoid for them if I can. Next, we really want to offer them control over their own image and narrative. I have a reputation online. When people think of me, they think of things. Whether those things are good or bad, I don't really know, but things are thought. The reality is my kids might not want to be associated with those things. When they become teens, maybe they'll think I'm cringy or like too millennial core, cause I am. I think it's really natural for adolescents to roll their eyes at their parents sometimes and want a little social distance. And for that reason, I don't want to like super glue my digital footprint to them. What if they want to be known for more than just being that trans YouTuber's child? Also, what if I posted content about them that they later found embarrassing? 
or that didn't align with how they wanted to portray themselves in the world. Gray and I want our kids to be able to tell their story, and it would make that a lot harder for them if there were already a multi-year video library established. And lastly, as I already mentioned, I never want to exploit them. I love them too much, they're way too precious. For me, no YouTube video is worth it. Okay, so now that we've established how and why I safeguard the twins' privacy, you might be wondering why I even share their existence at all. Well, believe it or not, they're a huge part of my life, duh. They dominate a bulk of my time and brain space. They are what I am most proud of and most excited about. And truthfully, it pains me to not share every single photo and video and story and tidbit of information about them because they are the coolest. And if you experienced them, I just know you would think the same thing. Plus, I have over a decade long track record of sharing my life with the internet. It's not like talking about what I'm up to is new for me. And right now my kids are what I'm up to. So the way I see it is I'm just doing what I've always done, plus some necessary restrictions for safety. Additionally, social media, especially YouTube, is a really special memory bank for me. Gray and I still look back sometimes on some of the first videos we ever filmed together, and it is so cute and nostalgic, and I just really cherish that we have those digital time capsules. And even with our faces covered by emojis and stickers, I'm hoping there will be a similar effect with the kiddos and parenting content. And most importantly, I think that queer family visibility and representation and education is so essential. Seeing happy and fulfilled gay and trans parents made a huge difference for me before I started on this path myself. So no offense straight people, but I just think there can be a little bit more of a purpose when a marginalized family shares about their experience and journey versus when the seven jillionth cishet couple makes a family channel. And I'm not trying to be shady, it's just because gay and trans parents provide hope to fellow community members and fill that void of lack of representation. I still love some of your content, straight people. Like for instance, I'm sure it exists and I probably just need to hunt around more, but off the top of mind, I can't think of a family that looks like Gray and I. So one that has two non-binary parents, both with non-traditional transition paths. So for us, that means like top surgery without being on hormones. And I don't know, there's something about if you don't see it, you wonder if it's allowed. So I just want other people who are like me or kind of like me to know that you're allowed. All right, I know this video is long, but I kind of want to explore one more thing before I go. The reason that I felt compelled to talk about this and almost justify why I share my kiddos online and how I'm thoughtful about it is because there still exist so many rampant accusations about LGBT plus people harming and exploiting children. Someone recently asked on Instagram why I even share my kids' bodies on the internet. Since their faces are covered, they suppose that it must not be for the memories, which isn't true. And then they asked, is it for the influence? Then someone else chimed in and said they were thinking the same thing, plus anybody who's good at Photoshop can apparently take off those emojis or graphics. I'm gonna be honest, those comments, they really bother me. They like really get under my skin. I wish they didn't, but I find them super hurtful. And in these last few years, I have put a lot of work into letting criticism that I think is unkind or unfair just be. I try to get really dialectic about it and understand that that comment can exist without automatically being true. Someone can feel that way and I can let it sit without buying into it. I can still feel calm and confident about my personhood and my behavior. I am sensitive, but I have gotten so much better at this. But when people imply that I am exploiting or using my kids for influence, it is like the ultimate trigger. It is my Achilles heel. And that's because it feeds into this idea that LGBT plus people are inherently harmful. And sometimes I wonder if commenters like this are giving the same scrutiny to all families who post pictures of their kids or just to the trans person who is trying their best to walk the line between visibility and empowerment and privacy. I don't know, I'm not saying it's intentional, but it feels like a double standard sometimes. Hi, hey, real quick, I wanna be clear that I am not trying to weaponize my queer identity to shield me against valid criticism. For example, in a couple weeks, I'm gonna post a video about a playroom I made the kids in which I acknowledge that folks could have feedback around making it safer or more fun. I don't think I'm a perfect parent and you can critique me. It's just the, exploitative or using your children accusations that I wish people would think twice about. I mean, it can still happen. Gay and trans parents can certainly exploit their kids, anybody can, but the scrutiny that these communities are subjected to on this matter is usually unwarranted and definitely disproportional. So 
just like, I don't know, take a beat and really think critically before you casually throw those claims out there because those are some big like those are some big accusations to make you know but yeah i'm not saying like queer people can't be shitty parents anyone like regardless of sexuality can be a shitty parent obviously so i share this for two reasons first i'm wondering about the emoji photoshop thing that's not true right I know it's not, but I'm paranoid. After reading that, I deep dove into it and couldn't find anything confirming that claim as legitimate. I even asked the OP if they could provide me a source, but they said that they couldn't give me a specific source and suggested that I just join like Photoshop groups on Facebook. So I don't think this is real, but if it is, I want to know. And second, I want folks to understand how often queer people face accusations like these and how hurtful they can be. This was not my first time with something like this. See the hours and hours of long Abigail Schreier content I made on my main channel. And I don't know, it's just like... Like I... I take so much offense. Like, I really do. <laughs> like, my kids are everything to me. I would do anything to protect them and nurture them. So the suggestion that I would ever use them is just, like, heinous to me. Yeah. Anyway, let me know what you think. Am I being overdramatic? I might be. I can't help it. It really is my softest soft spot. But yeah, also feel free to share any questions or advice or insights or Photoshop tips that you have with me in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye. Oh, actually, I lied. Before I go, I can think of one more reason that I share my family online, and that is to cultivate community and create connection. Because who would have guessed Gray and I actually aren't in touch with a ton of IRL Midwest LGBT families. So while cis straight families can, you know, connect with people on their block or in their friend group, it's a little harder for us. I think this is something that cishet folks take for granted sometimes, that they can connect with similar people in real space, while gay and trans folks often must resort to digital routes. And I'm a new parent, so I have questions and need advice, and I want an outlet for all my new parent thoughts. That's all. Okie dokie. Wow, you made it to the end! Uh, here is the obligatory part where I ask you to follow me on other social media platforms because it profoundly affects my self-worth. Just kidding, it doesn't really. But, you know, please follow me anyway because that would be fun and I mean fun for my self-esteem. Haha, <laughs> no, not actually. Uh, I am truthfully totally indifferent and if no one follows me, you know, I'm not gonna like cry into a pillow all afternoon. <laughs> I, I did that last Wednesday, so I, I think it's out of my system now. Yeah. Bye.